Well, hello and welcome to Season 2, Episode 45 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I am your host, Claire Rowley, and I have quite a variety of different things on my table today, and this one may look kind of weird to you. You'll see I have a bunch of handles in each of the octahoops. And that is because I, I want to try something that I have always suspected that we could do with my Octi Hoops. I'm actually the inventor of a line of sewing machine products if you're new to my channel. And one of them is the Octi Hoops. That's what I'm mentioning here. And a lot of people that are watching today already have them. So I like to give you different things that you can do with them. And today I'm going to talk about the possibility of doing faux knitting with them to incorporate into a holiday scarf or a, just a regular scarf that you can give for the holidays. If you are viewing on YouTube right now, and we are live right now, this is December 2nd, 2021. If you're watching on that day, and it is after two Mountain Standard Time, then you're watching live. If you want to chat and you're not on a television set watching, or if you are and you have a keypad tied into your computer, you can participate in the chat. If you do not see your picture up in the far right-hand corner of the screen inside of YouTube, then you're probably not logged in. You must be logged into your YouTube account, the one that you subscribe to our channel in, in order to chat in the live chat. So if you've ever been in the background and tried to chat and got frustrated because you weren't able to do that, well, that is the reason. So you want to get in there, make sure you're logged into your email account, and then you can type into the chat. And I hope that you'll join us today. If you're too shy to participate in the chat, I still know that you're lurking there. I get a lot of calls from people who just don't have the desire to participate in the chat. Know that I, I know you're there and I'm glad that you're joining us today as well as Tina and Judith Thorpe and Donna from Florida, Brenda Foley. Hi, Brenda. It's been a while. I hope that you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Those of you in the United States that celebrated as I did last week, which is why there was no show last week. And I will not have shows. I'm, I'm thinking of not having a show the last two weeks of December. So I'll let you know what I end up deciding. And that's mostly because there's just things I have to get caught, on, caught up on that have fallen behind. And I am this close to finishing my novel and cannot, and I, and I, promised myself last year I would finish it. So I switched that to this year. Instead of having a New Year's resolution, I'm having an end of year resolution, and that is to finish once and for all my novel called Beyond the Brushstrokes, and I will let you all know when it releases. Have my keyboard out. <clears throat> so you can see this. This is the smallest of the octahoops, and I have the clips that we offer at Creative Feet, these are the Clip It Clips, and they're, they're bigger than your Wonder Clips. I think I have a Wonder Clip here, yeah. You can see. It's like Wonder Clip's big brother. <clears throat> and it also has holes that you can feed yarn through so that you could actually do use these to increase the variety of the yarn combinations that you do with this. And I removed it from right here, where I had wrapped around the handles. So you can see what I have done isn't very attractive right now, I don't think, but kind of cool. And know that this is the first time I've done it, so I'm really just kind of... I did that right before I went live.
So does this sound fun? And uh, I have fabrics that I have prepared to make a scarf possibly like this one. I don't need one for Christmas because I already made one for Christmas. But I would like to have a scarf in my favorite colors, which is the teal with some purple, but not too much purple. Another thing you might want to start really doing is looking at all the different yarns that you can get. This is a pack I bought at a show, and I don't even want to tell you how much I spent on this, but I will. I spent over $300 on this box of yarn, and I think there's one little ball missing from here. But there's, it's kind of nice because they all kind of color coordinate with one another, and you can combine the different ones together with this as well. So we're going to go ahead and play around with this. Right now this is just the spool that I used and you can tell I tend to fall towards these color schemes, this color scheme right here. However, I have a lot of yarn, a lot of yarn for not being a knitter. <laughs> ah. So if you don't want to go out and buy a whole bunch of different yarns, there are yarns available that are different within one skein. And this was what I used for a scarf that I brought into the room here to show you. Set this aside. And this is what I initially did with this. This is a fun scarf, don't you think? It has the fluffies on the end and, and this knitted area right here that I did not knit. I used the OctaHoops, but I used our stick and rinse stabilizer. And since we're out of stock on that right now, I've been thinking, is there another way we can do it? Maybe with no stabilizer at all, using the handles. And so that's what we're going to do today. So this is the exact kind of same kind of I think it's the exact same skein and you can see you can get a lot of use out of one of these. I'll give you the, this is what it is. I don't know if it's still available. I bought this a long time ago and I think I picked it up at Joann's. It's a Coates and Clark's product. So that's where I would start. And this would be your cheapest way of getting a variety of different types of yarns in the same color scheme in lieu of getting lots of little balls of yarn. Another thing that you might want to do is incorporate some of the quilt highlights that we have at creativefeet.com and I'm probably going to incorporate that in the actual sewing part because I think this would be absolutely gorgeous on the fabric to join the fabrics together in place of just a standard yarn. These are the fabrics that I plan to use. I think I got this area lit better finally. Got some special lighting over here so you can see what's on this table as it's supposed to be seen. Like these fabrics, I may only use these two. We'll see. It's up to you. It's up to me what I do for mine and up to you for what you use on yours. Let me see if I can show you this a little better. So I deliberately left this area here hanging to create an artistic appearance to it. 
And the thread that sewed it all together is that goldish tone thread running through it, which is a polyester thread. And then on the bottom, I did the same thing. So it's not a lot that I used, just a little bit. If you get really good at this, you may find that you want to make the entire scarf out of just that yarn. And with the octahoops, you have such flexibility. I don't see why not. My thought is that we need to use no foot at all, because how would you get a foot to behave how you want on here? This handle's a little loose, which I don't know why. Can't get this one out at all. We're probably gonna sell the handles in sets uh, a dozen at a time. Uh, if this goes really well so that you can afford to buy them better. If you currently only have two handles, you might be a little bit annoyed seeing this. You might also try using matchsticks in place if you just want to give this a try right away. And I definitely found that we needed the clips on the top to hold the yarn to keep it from sliding up because I designed these handles to taper so they're wider at the bottom and narrower at the top. Let's see if you can. These would work too if you have the wonder clips. But you can actually feed yarn through these holes and you got a hole on both sides of one of these clips so that could add sections to go in between. And we'll see what, we'll see how it all goes. Does this sound like a fun thing or should I just not do this at all right now? Do something more simple. You know, I just, I love batiks, <laughs> Tina. I have a really hard time passing by any table with batiks. This is the softest yarn. I think I would enjoy this around my neck more than that. I'm going to show you what it is so that uh, you could pick it up. This is awesome. Really soft because I get a little itchy from things. I don't think this would make me itchy at all. What is this made out of? So 50% acrylic, 50% polymade, polyamide, and made in Argentina. And I don't know where I picked it up. Because I didn't know that I was going to teach this. Right now, we are currently sold out of 9014 needles in the Universal, unless you buy a 100 pack. We're waiting on them. We had them on order for a while. I don't know uh, when they'll be back in stock, but just they're probably on a boat on their way to the United States from Germany. But meanwhile, know that we have 100 packs. And I did get. A question of what needle to use in embroidery from one of the students in the school. I haven't had a chance to catch up. We had just been a, just so busy with dealer orders in addition to Christmas present orders and me making pressers and being shorthanded. So I am working my darndest to get everything out for you guys. The uh, question that I had was what needle to use for embroidery. So if you're watching right now, uh, you can start with the universal, but you can use an embroidery 9014, a universal 9014, a super non-stick or super universal with a non-stick feature to it, which we do have those in stock. We also have the top stitch needle in stock and you can embroider with that as well. The universal style tip is on all of those needles so you won't damage your fabric when you embroider. And each one will successfully embroider. Just try to start with the universal because it's the least expensive of all the needles. But uh, like I said, and it is the most used needle in the collection of needles, which is why it's sold out right now. And it's because it's the most accommodating for the widest range of threads. And in this case, I am gonna use a 40 weight this thing is not wanting to stay where I want it. 
Maybe I can shift this. I decided to use my large table, which I never really set up. I've since painted the sewing machine over and it's got a different shade of blue. I never really finished the table because it takes up so much space. But I was thinking about using the largest of the hoops with the yarn and, and I just thought, you know, I feel like I never show that you can get a table like this and use it successfully with the octa hoops as well as having the machine be lifted up. So if I wanted the thread to complement this, then I would choose a color that complements. And this is a good one, burgundy. But maybe, yeah, it's fine. Don't overthink it. And it's polyfast. Available at creativefeet.com under the products link. You'll find thread in there and we have a variety of different threads available to you. If you wanted your, your stitch not to show at all, you could use the invisible thread that we offer, which is nylon and available also under the nylon threads link. This one would work too, which was already in the machine. You can also use metallic, but remember if it's going to go around your neck, metallic thread might scratch the skin. We are going to knit. What did I do? Okay, here we go again. Short arms trying to navigate around all the stuff on the machine. Sorry it took me so long to get the turkey marinade recipe in the school for you guys. I know that it wasn't enough time for anyone to really use it. But it was delicious. My sisters all, this. let this be our last Thanksgiving that we do. Time to pass the torch to the younger generation. And I'm, I'm all for that being her choice, but I'm, I'm reserving the right to maybe cook another turkey in my life. All right, so without a foot, we don't have to worry about the foot catching on the yarn, which is reminding me of Cats in the Cradle when I was a child. So the needle is clearing and it's just barely clearing. So I'm going to try to push down on these to bring the yarn down a little bit. I was also thinking that if I had strung the medium frame first, And it had yarn all over it. And then I placed this one on top. Well, now we can create layers of yarn and join them all together. And I don't know, I got, I can see all kinds of different things that could occur from doing that. Can you? Like maybe some beautiful yarn type floral that we could create. I'll, uh, Play around with the idea and maybe you guys can as well and share with me what you do as you get more and more brave with your octi hoops. Let's see how this goes. What do we do? <clears throat> see y'all thought I was just gonna teach you some boring old scarf today. The feed dogs are up. It really is irrelevant. There's no way they have any interaction with the yarn as the yarn is so much higher than the bed of the soy, than the bed of the sewing machine. <clears throat> it's almost like guitar strings. See how bouncy that is? I'm gonna try to get the microphone a little bit higher. There we go. I get my glasses on. My weekly struggle. It's amazing how good I can see with glasses on. So what I'm going to do, and you may not know that you can sew without anything. You can just do a stitch. Bring up your bobbin thread. I got to take my shoe off. So bring my bobbin thread up, just like you can bring your bobbin thread up and nothing really goes bad with the machine. You can continue to just pretend you're bringing the bobbin thread up and then we just hop over here and go over here 
and come over here and you can see how now we are bringing these yarns together and I'm holding the needle and bobbin thread but I think it would be another good use to come around here not cut them yet could tie a knot or just wrap it around your handle and now it's just uh, I think I'm going to take my thread tension down to three normal at four so one number lower and I'm going to take and make sure all of my clips are parallel with the frame so that I don't run into it as this is something I've never done before so my brain is more likely to make a mistake so kind of like doing the uh, spiderweb technique except for everything is suspended this is quite something how fun I wish I had time to play before and really have some skill with this I think I'm going to kind of follow along with a star kind of pattern good to catch some of the yarn not just go around it but actually stitch through the yarn Something feels like it's pulling. What? What is that? Don't see anything going wrong. What is that? I don't know what I'm feeling. It's just weird. First time. Is anything catching the yarn from the thread dispenser? I don't see anything. Okay. Is this trippy? <laughs> Would you guys be afraid to do this? Or are you guys, are you feeling ready to challenge yourself with new things? So now I'm going through all four of those strands of, of yarn, one stitch at a time. I think what's happening is some, sometimes the handle is hitting the screw here. So I'm going to take the screw off completely, which is not something I usually do because I never want to lose that back where it belongs so now there's less there if you have a Bernina you have you already don't have you don't have a post either so you'll have more freedom you guys are quiet feel free to ask questions or participate with one another so this this yarn is so far over I'm going to kind of pull it over a little bit Make sure that I'm not going to strike the hoop. <laughs> it's a little, a little unnerving. I'll go in front of the yarn first. There we go. I caught it. Now that one's part of it. Okay, I'm going slow because I'm just trying to see all of the different things that we don't, wouldn't expect. Like the nut being in the way. And so what I did on the other one is I had our stick and rent stabilizer and I laid it down in a pattern. This is kind of cool. I guess I'm, a, I'm ready to pick up speed. Don't push down. As we never push down when we use the octa hoops. Keep your elbows down. Oops. This is uh, similar, to similar to the felting technique. So I think your sewing machine needle is going to you know, feel better with no fabric if you go forward and back rather than sideways because of the anatomy of the needle. I did clean the machine before I started. Highly recommend that when you're doing something like this. This would be the most challenging thing you can do with your machine. So you want to each stitch you make is kind of ties a little knot and creates a more chained look to the thread as it's going across. So we're, we really are closing up the voids in between the uh, strands of yarn. No reason to go fast if you're not comfortable going fast. 
especially when you're trying something new. I feel like I should have done the bigger hoop because it'd be more, it would end up being bigger. Maybe I did go too low. I'm gonna go back up to four on the tension, try it. Just assumed it would need it. Keep hearing it catching on something and can't see because I got too much stuff everywhere. I'm trying not to lose the shape and see how close I'm coming to that screw, so I'm going to rotate. I have nylon thread in the bobbin. Maybe I should have had the same kind of thread in the needle in the bobbin. It is definitely the most challenging thing you'd ever do with a machine because we're we're not sewing something that is flat or level with the throat plate. It's elevated. It's quite astounding that we can do it at all, isn't it? I really think I need a new bobbin case, you guys. It looked a little bit wonky when I was cleaning it today. I might switch it with the one for the other machine that I have here. Because I think I should be able to just zoom all around without having any issue. Sideways. See that catching sound is... Not the hoop's fault. Something's like struggling in my bobbin case. I wonder if I have another bobbin case in my drawer that's brand new. Hello, Linda. Welcome to the chat. Are you saying that you couldn't chat before, but now you know how, and... Ah. All right. Yeah, I don't like how that's sounding. Let me see if I have a bobbin case in my drawer. I keep feeling like I've seen one here. One bobbin case, two bobbin case, Ooh. and that's like Christmas. <laughs> this is what I think is failing on my bobbin case, is this little felt pad, and I think it's getting stuck underneath there, and well, this machine has been used quite extensively for many years, so... This machine, I believe the free arm is bent. So I have to kind of lift it up to pull this off. And then it drops down, which, you know, this machine sh was shipped a lot. <laughs> Bear with me. Not enough room on this table for all this stuff. And take this out. And this is, I think it's catching on that so that you can see the adhesive is has loosened up in there. So if you ever have like catching, intermittent catching in your machine and you have one of these machines, then it's quite possible you need a new one. Now they have a purple dot in here, which means this is probably meant for something specifically. And having never read the book, I'm just going to kind of look at it. It may, they may have the tension set a little different for 
something specific. You can see I have ooh, a real rough spot down here. So time to put that one in the drawer. If you have a top loading bobbin you always want to make sure that you have a little space right there so that the bobbin can swing around and never oil that race because this is teflon and that's metal and when you put oil on it, it makes it spin faster this doesn't need any oil and then it makes the this pull too close to that spring which is called the gib and this is the gib gap the, the space between so if there's metal on there then it's it it makes the bobbin case pull to that too tight and causes a snapping sound and in an in inconsistent tight bobbin. Hello Sylvia, welcome. I know that last name now. Okay. All right, we are doing something very strange today. Fun. A good kind of strange, right? I didn't cut the needle thread. I did cut the bobbin, but kept the needle thread in there. Pulled up, raised the foot to release the tension and pulled all that slack back toward the cone of thread. And lower the foot back down. And now it should bring that bobbin thread up. Come on, bobbin thread. It's a little bit different for the machine. It's like there's no fabric. Should have brought the bobbin thread up. I think I got it. Did I get it? Come on, sewing machine. Do what I want. Pretend this is no big deal for you. <laughs> oh, darn it. Okay. Just gonna cut that thread. I hope it isn't a problem later. Oh, that's what was going on. I had a knot. The bobbin thread is up. It's just too short. And it's really, really tight. Oh, well, we'll see how well this goes. I may have to, you know what? It's probably the nylon thread increases bobbin tension automatically. Instead of loosening the screw or tighten to change my tension, I'm just going to use Invisafil in the bobbin, which is a hundred weight thread, so it'll go through easier. Still got to bring that thread up. Hello, Mary from Buena Park, California, home of Knott's Berry Farm. I went there as a child and I uh, got to see how they made their boysenberry jam. Never forgot that. <laughs> Just tried to thread the needle and it was already threaded. I used to live in California. For those of you who didn't know that. So you can see how much different in size the bobbin is from the needle. And I did that simply because I put in a bobbin case that's probably set too tight. We're doing something very strange today because it's Fabrically Speaking Live. I think this, oh, look at that. What a difference. No, no negative noise coming from my bobbin case anymore. Just need a new bobbin case. Yes, you should oil your baby lock machine wherever metal meets metal and moves. But this thread is, <laughs> look at this, this thread right here is just, you can't tell that it's like pulling sideways. There's so much static electricity in here. I can't just toss it to the left. I gotta throw it in the trash. <laughs> it's 
So if you're not taking your sewing machine in for service, for your baby lock dealer, especially with COVID, a lot of people aren't. Still got a little of that sound. Then I, they should teach you, you should, you should be able to ask them to teach you how to maintain the sewing machine when they're not servicing it. But make sure you take it in yearly for them to oil. Even if you oil your machine, there are places in your machine that you are not aware of that are not easily accessible, especially if you have a Janome. Janome even made their own screws and their own screwdrivers to prevent unauthorized sewing machine dealers from getting into their machines. There are felt pads located through the machine. Okay, I don't like, I don't think it likes this combination of thread. And I am going a lot slower. Take the thread tension back down, see if that helps. Hello, Sherry from Idaho. Hope I haven't missed any of you. So I am joining threads together or yarns together using the Octi hoops, having wrapped them around the handles. And obviously you're given two handles in the kit, but now you can see the kind of thing you could do with more handles. If I had used the larger hoop, I could be setting the smaller hoop down on top, which would push down on the yarn. I say we try it with a foot now. It's really got nice spring. Where's my foot for this machine? Do you guys know where I put my foot from last week? I was trying to put, always put the feet back in this cubby. If you've been waiting for a presser, they are all made and shipped out as of yesterday. If you place an order today, that's not the case. So this foot might be a problem because it has a horseshoe. If you had one that's round, it may work better, but I honestly don't think this is going to be a good idea. It's actually, there's just no way this is using a foot would be the right thing in this case. Just got to go slower because as the foot would be hopping, it would also be stubbing its toe on these strands. Eh, I'll give it a try. May as well. Where's my screw? My <laughs> I got a loose, a screw loose. <laughs> you know what I worked when I started today? The bobbin case or this throat plate was loose. I had not tightened the screws and see even I make mistakes like that. Always tighten the nut and the needle bar when or the needle which is really loose whenever using a free motion foot because this bar there's a bar here that's going to hit the needle bar every time it makes a stitch. I was thinking of using the denim thread too because it's really thick and almost yarn-like in its appearance. But let me start first with 48 and then I thought, well, I, you may as well watch me learn. See how it's like, it's in there. It's below the yarn right now. This is why I, my my uh, thought is correct. The only way to do it would be to put my fingers here. <laughs> Let's, I'll, I'm going to keep trying. Not giving up that easy. Need my glasses though. I got thread wrapped around my glasses. What the heck is this? Thread's got so much static electricity today.
let go of me thread. There we go. I keep trying to get set up to where we can be on Facebook as well as YouTube, just so in case you like to watch things in Facebook. See, if I would have to put my finger down here to keep it from stubbing its toes. And I don't think that a round one will work any better either because there's just too much opportunity for it, anything that's flat to get stuck under one of those strands of thread. Yeah, definitely slowing me down. Hello, Amy. Welcome. Amy is better days. What are we making? We are, we are trying something I've never done before. Because why not? So what I have here is a bunch of handles in my octahoop. And I, I'm taking the foot off because I just thought I'd give it a try for anyone who wanted was wondering if it would help. Clearly, it is not a help. It's a hindrance. So get the foot out of here. And what I'm doing is creating a kind of knit to use or incorporate into a scarf. Always put your stuff away so you know where it is, Claire. Yeah, um, there used to be a foot called Bigfoot. I don't know if it's still available. I don't have one. The dish shape where it's round and kind of like that. That would that would definitely work, but no need no foot at all is also working. So I'm filling it in a little bit, but we can also add more yarn, which adding more yarn is more fun since we have a lot of yarn. I want it to be soft. This is so expensive though. I'm like, do I want to use that? <laughs> this won't match. This is nice and fuzzy and will fill in nicely. This is actually three strands together that make this yarn. Do a little slip knot. Take it around. Still learning, you guys. This is where I think if we had the clips, we could go like this and add another row. Oh, I'm sorry, I had it out of your view. I don't know what we're going to do with it, but hey, we're playing around. This is Play Around Thursday. I don't think the yarn's going to match with the fabric that I chose, so... I go quiet when I think. And that's adding more depth to that. <laughs> yeah, there's an eyelash yarn mixed in here, Carlene. Welcome, Carlene. I didn't give you guys much notice. It was two minutes before I went live and I said, join me now. <laughs> and I had notified a bunch of other ways, but the school got notified late. So sorry about that. I went to do it a couple times and something happened that distracted me. 
Chase was a naughty dog and got into Tinkerbell's food today, which kind of threw me off a little bit because I built a corral or a stall for Tinkerbell. Oh, I'm kind of liking this. Oh, I hate to cook. I hate to use this for this, but now it's like just looks like a whole bunch of mess, but it's it looks cooler from above. <laughs> Remember, we want to keep the handles parallel with the hoop so that you don't hit them with the needle bar mostly would be you your eye is on the needle you're less likely to hit something that way so now I'm going to add more stitching <laughs> you can't even see the needle moving or raising up above uh, looks like I got a, a little shredding of the thread it's sewing of course if I had my glasses on I could see for sure whoops those are my glasses that just fell to the ground <laughs> there we are it is cool it's kind of like a Christmas star so I mean if you were to do this and you thought about it being a star and use like silver and white that would be pretty but it's uh first time I have no idea what I'm gonna do with it we'll see so I would take your cruise control your speed control down to slow so that you don't surprise yourself there is a risk of breaking a needle if you were to move this too fast while the needle was in motion but it'd be really hard to break the needle more likely just to break thread it's going pretty good I don't see why you couldn't add fabric as well now to the bottom because it'd be kind of cool to have this stitched onto something going nice this is a good good speed Do I have the weirdest show ever? I show some strange things because we can do just about anything with the Creative Feet products. And the only way you learn something new is if you try it. I had a dream the other night of something that I don't even know is possible, but I dreamt it and now I want to do it. It's art though, it wouldn't be sewing. I'm haunted in my sleep from projects that want to be born. I hate to say it, it's kind of like a, <laughs> what are they, that, uh, what you see on a witch's outfit, <laughs> or what is that um, symbol? maybe not have all the handles so we don't create this particular design. I don't know what it's called. Do you guys? I don't watch those vampire shows, but uh, kind of makes me think of something kind of like that. What is, if it's not a star, it is a what? Amy, I may not have a show. I'm gonna, I probably will only do, oh, my threads will fell over. Oh my goodness, it didn't have it on the stand. What the heck? A pentagram. Thank you. Did 
Does it have that kind of look to you? Oh, you guys can't see it from above. In a minute, I'll feel like I've got a good handle on this. Oh, it's really like so, it's so trippy that the fabric is, is not down at all on the sewing machine surface and it's sewing. Kind of has a felting texture or consistency or feel, except for we don't have the needles, just one. Oh, I'm hitting something with one of the handles. Oh, it's my foot lever. That's why it stops me. And then... I don't think it's stitching. It's got that weird thing that happens sometimes <laughs> where it's tied a knot. I think I cut this. And I'm still okay, no. This is one of those weird instances where even I cannot figure out how this happens. How the thread, it's like it goes out of the needle, comes back into the needle, and ties around the needle. <laughs> Spell check! <laughs> It's a really tight tension, which is interesting. Let's see, I think this will look better on the top camera. What do you think? <laughs> what can we do with that? I could see like attaching with rhinestones onto something, but this is like really strong. I'm just gonna take it off now and see about, should I do that or should I just attach it to fabric? I think I should attach it to fabric. Just to see what, it, what we've got going on. If I use a big enough piece of fabric, I can maybe make it into a scarf, but we could just keep going with this and join all these different yarn pieces together to create an overall scarf or as I showed you before have it just be part of a cloth scarf having some yarn integrated into it so what fabric should I use did I have the fabric It kind of works. I think I can do better. Hmm. Oh, well, I'll just stick it on that. I feel like I just, I keep buying things with these color combinations. I'm prone to that, that color of purple. Maybe as an accent, I think that's better. I don't want to waste all this. And when I did this, which is a video on in my channel, I had a broken shoulder when I made this. And my friend Terry was with me and she's paralyzed on her right hand and I couldn't use my left hand. So she was my left hand for the filming of this. I think it was New Year's Eve. But not bad with a broken shoulder, huh? And so I can kind of do the same thing with this or I could do something different and I just 
could just stitch yarn all the way down have this be I don't know we got to make it long though if we're gonna make a scarf and I like to kind of join the fabrics together you could run your fabric the length that you're gonna make your scarf or you can join it combining other fabrics together to create a tiered version and when you're using cotton fabric it's good to go wide you can always cut it and make it narrower I'm gonna bring out a scarf here in a moment for you to see I'll be right back. I'm not even going to leave the room, so I won't put the music on. Oh, this is another version or type of scarf that you can make using the uh, creative feet and this was made for me by one of my customers uh, her name she won she won a prize at a show oh, what's her name her name had a Z for the last name if I can read this maybe you can read that label cherry key was it oh Cheryl Zimke and she made this beautiful butterfly dress or a dress that was inspired by a butterfly but you can see what she's done here is super fun and you can make a whole bunch of scarves all at once by simply doing long strips and then chopping them and turning them into individual scarves and she did this by having a back fabric on uh, on the and it's raw edges on the sides where you could actually add yarn to the sides to finish it off but it's a kind of she sold a lot of these so if you're into Etsy it's uh, another product that you can sell but you can also do it chunky and just have one big piece and then go to the next piece, which is what I did here. Where this seems like it's one fabric, it's not. Got, and then I added some shreds of fabric. And then this has a pocket to put your wallet in and your cell phone and your keys. And it has a slot. For your hands to go inside so if you're sitting out waiting for your uber and it's new year's eve and it's below zero and there's snow on the ground and you don't have a purse and you didn't bring gloves you got a hand warmer and so this is the one i was speaking about last week it has lots of hidden things about it that makes it more fun but i did sections and joined across by adding the pocket and having the yarn be eyelash yarn makes it harder to detect that there was different fabrics just having complementary fabrics or you can use the same fabric cut it stitch it with yarn no one will be able to tell that you stitched it you'll be the only one that knows what do you guys like which version do you like the most I cut that word I do with it. Fuzzy fuzzy. So much about sewing is fuzzy. So this will be a nice wide scarf. And I can shape it however I want. But I think I want to have nothing behind my neck so i'm going to put it on right about here <laughs> i 
And this is how we design on the fly. And I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. I feel like this needle is bad. And I didn't mind because I was just sewing yarns together. I might mind now. All right, here we go. Let's see how well we can attach this. And now the, the octi hoop is going to act like a foot to anchor it down. All right, so lowering the foot, despite there not being one. Let's see if we can get that bobbin thread to come up. So much stuff here, you can't see the thread. I think I got the bobbin thread. There we go. Okay, now, now I have to keep the fabric together or the hoop together with the actual fabric. So my brain is, I have to think, how, how would I best do this? I think I'm going to just kind of take up the fabric like that and clip it onto the handle. And do that on both sides. Might want to do that on four sides, but right now I think I'll just try it on two. All right, crossing fingers. <laughs> Another first in front of you guys live. I don't know, does it show that I'm a little crazy to do this kind of thing live or? Whoops. I'm gonna do a circular pattern, spiral go. Did I do the wrong side? I can't tell. <laughs> Should have checked first. I did the right side, that's right. I used my cheat by having the, not ironing out the fold first. You always know your right side is the side the fold is on. Sewing yarn to the fabric. The, the yarn is, is a half, almost a half inch, elevated above the surface of the fabric. The handle's hitting the foot lever again. Sewing machine is not enjoying it, but we don't care. You're going to do what I want. Get that back there. Might be able to pull that shred through the needle got it through now it just becomes part of the yarn but it's, this is not wanting to go where it's supposed to why is that there's something back there catching this thread we go okay feel free to ask questions you guys <laughs> I know this will evolve into something really cool that we can do what's happening that you may not be able to notice is the fabric is being pulled up it's being brought up to the yarn instead of the yarn being brought down to the fabric. It's quite something to observe from up here. I have this sensation of excitement over something new and had no idea it was going to evolve into this. One of the handles is running into the foot lever. 
But all in all, it's it's really sewing relatively well for doing something so insane. Just every once in a while it, it has an issue. But you won't be able to know that. That's the handle again. <laughs> Why won't it move? How many times do you have to run into the handle before you remember, Claire? Definitely would be easier, I think, with a larger frame because you'd have, you wouldn't get so close to the handles. Of course, there'd be a lot more yarn stretched across. I'm like, ooh, we could do something else. We could make strips of fabric and attach them to the handle. Yeah, it doesn't like to go backwards. That's when it seems to have the problem with the stitching. Can you see that? I think I'm gonna spin it around. I'm getting a little nervous because I can't really see where I'm going. And the handle's back here. This one is the one that's going to run into the take-up lever handle. But more important is to not hit the frame with the needle. Once again, this one is running into my but my buttonholer attachment thingy. <laughs> so I just can spin it around so I can get around that. Everything is really well held by the handles, so I'm barely using any muscles at all in my hands to do this. It's very, very light touch, no pushing down needed at all. Coming forward. So where there is a handle, I'm gonna go back and forth to, if I can get it to sew right now, it's got one of those shreds. Ha, got away with it. I want to make sure that where these handles are coming up, that I got a good amount of stitching going side to side. And I may just have to do that with a foot when we're done. Ah! That's what will happen if you hit that. The machine will alarm and make a loud, scary noise. And it, it locks its gears so that you can't damage the hook assembly of your machine. But you don't want to do that very often because what will end up happening is the needle bar will start to loosen or start to move up and you'll need to have the sewing machine dealer fix it and put it back in the right height. This is so weird. This is so lifted from the bed of the machine. <laughs> First time doing something new. Who thought my show would be a bunch of new techniques? All right. I wonder if I can let go of the yarns now. Let's see. Take a couple clips off. Oh, that one, I got it wrapped in it. Still want to keep it on the loop. Definitely got a weird feeling with it not having the clips. To hold it. But now I can get closer to the frame. Yeah, 
I guess we'll just gradually take off the clips and so take off that handle too. This is so cool. It's fun to be able to do something like this without stabilizer. Oh, here we go. Now it's starting to drop down to the bed of the machine over there. I definitely don't like not using my handles. <laughs> Feels so weird now. Once upon a time, we didn't have handles to do free motion. I'm gonna leave it around that one because we do need, them, need some tautness in this. Coming together. Ah, broke my needle. How many is that, Amy? <laughs> Amy's counting how many needles I broke in 2021, live. So I hit the frame, and no needle will bear that. And I want you to see something. This is good for you guys to learn. Right here is the tip of the needle. So sewing machine needles are actually designed to break above the eye so that the eye of the needle doesn't go down into the machine or fly into your eye. They actually heat up the needle and make it weak in one spot so that it will break. And it pr protects the hook of the sewing machine from, from that. If you ever have a needle break and it falls down in there, it's not a Schmetz needle. One of the reasons I carry this Schmetz line. Where are those tweezers? I just had them. Oh, there they are. Ugh. I'm going to be looking into the 9014 needles for you guys this week. Give them a call and see what they think about when we should be able to get them back in. Meanwhile, I could open one of the 100 packs and sell you guys some loose needles in a baggie if you're desperate for some 9014 universals. And this is as of November, nope, December 2nd, 2021. If you like what you're seeing, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you've yet to, to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. And I'm looking for needles. So this is a hundred pack. Three left in this one. That's what I would travel with at a show because I broke a lot of needles at shows. It also wear out and I'd scratch the tip by dragging my fabric across and every 10 to 13 hours of non-stop sewing you should be getting rid of that needle anyway and that is not you sitting there preparing to sew it's the actual running of the needle the, especially with polyester thread it it drags through the eye of the needle and, and wears out the eye of the needle first by the way Okay, did I attach it all the way around? I think I did. I'm going to disconnect this and use a foot. Feels weird. What am I, what do I need to do now? Put my clips where they belong. If you don't have these clips, we do have some still in stock on our site. 
It's a popular stocking stuffer item. I think I need to do, I need to thread the needle. Where's the thread? Where's my head? Where's the thread? I don't know. Yeah, we have them in packs of 100. I highly recommend that. 9014, pack 100. Costs you less overall. And then you don't run out as fast. And I think we have a few of those left. A lot of people do buy them in 100 packs. All right, glasses. So did any of you make any of the ideas that I've given you lately as Christmas presents for people? I know I had one person call me and say she made a, some, some of the little bolsters for your elbows for her, for people that work with her. And uh, my son really likes it for his elbow. Oh, I did it again. My goodness, Claire. Did I? No, I did. There must be. There might be something under there. I should not. I think it just hit the needle bar. There's a lot of yarn here. That's where I have more than any other spot. So. I think I got it. I'm just going to disconnect all the handles now and put a foot on and that added to the tightness by wrapping the yarn around them. I don't need to have to service my machine. Enough of that. All right, here we go. So now we have that, and it's got all these loops. So these, you know, cut some of them off, and then they'll just be little, like, tufts of yarn. But we can also – where's that yarn that I started with? Oh, will that one go with it? I think it will. So does it scare you guys when I when I have the machine make that noise? I wish one of you would find the end for me and help me not regret how I do this. I'm not a knitter. I know you're not supposed to start on the outside, but I do frequently because I just... I haven't had the best experience with yarn. <laughs> Boy, this is like, there's no way this would behave well, even if I grabbed it from the middle. The yarn is like tying a knot with, the surface of the yarn is tying knots with the other textures. So now I can like do a loop and have it come down. Here we go. And I'll have that come out of one of these loops. Or I can just attach it to it. Let's see. Let's 
see it has the the loop right there from where it was around the handle but that's relatively small to get all that through there we can also just take the pearls and piping foot and stitch across well it will hold all the yarns together I don't like it they don't go together all right so I'm gonna see what happens when we just cut this it's only so much time in the day what time is it now 325 there was gonna be something happening today but and that kind of changes the shape from that pentagram. <laughs> all right, next time I'm going to have you come up, drive up here, and undo all my yarn. Not sure what I'm doing here. But it's definitely secured. You can feel it's like really on there. It's not gonna come off. I like what I did with the other one better. But this is us trying for the first time with no stabilizer. Did get a little puckering of the fabric. <laughs> little yarn pieces flying in my face. This might be good to have actually as a kind of like a pillow turn it right side out so that we don't see the back because the back is kind of puckered up but if I stabilized the fabric before putting it underneath there or just took it out of the hoop and attached it without doing that free motion I would have not broken a needle cover up the back by doing that this could be a spot where the hand goes in could be a muff instead of a scarf so basically what I normally would do is use the sequins and ribbon foot the liquid base glue and attach strips together to create any shape and any length that I like and that is how I made that other scarf. I'm trying to think. I could show you other things that you can incorporate to make into a scarf or want me to make a whole scarf. I definitely damaged the needle tip, so I'm going to toss that one it's, I'm just crossing fingers that we'll get those 9014 needles in soon thumbs up you guys if I you want me to finish this and make it into a scarf I kind of want to I was also thinking somebody mentioned making denim feathers last week. So I thought, well, I can do some, maybe some feathers to complement this, to incorporate into the yarn area, but not denim because I don't think it would go really well with this. Needles.
Is the person that wanted denim feathers in the chat today? If you are, say, hey, that was me. Thought for sure I saw it. grannies on here. Oh, there it is. My granny told you to always use yarn from the inside, then no tangles. That reminds me of my son saying, you need to get something to wear on your shirt. You know, I see old ladies all the time with these little things on their shirt and they're, they put their glasses in them so they don't lose them. And I was like, hey, you calling me an old lady? I'm not a granny yet because I don't have any grandkids. Tension feels tight. All right, we'll do some regular foot sewing now, and I will, I think it'd be kind of cool to make some kind of feather thing to kind of come out of here. So this will be a shoulder decoration, and the rest of the scarf, well, it doesn't need to be that fancy. And if you want to see how I make this, you can watch the video on, on making scarfs on my YouTube channel where I show how to do this. You can see it has like a braid that I make from the yarn using the pearls and piping foot and then I stitch it down with the pearls and piping foot onto the edge of the scarf and then the eyelash yarn well it's just it's loops of it and it makes it this furry soft flowing end which weights down the softness and the lightness of the cotton fabric. If you want to have the scarf have more body, don't use cotton. Use a uh, like a rayon blend or something at the store. Go up and feel the fabric and see how it drapes. You don't want something real stiff and have something that has a lot of body. So if I take a piece of this and make some leaves, I should compliment it, huh? Use different fabric. I said, huh? <laughs> Maybe not another batik. Well, if they're going to be leaves, they should be green, right? Not quite green, but I think it goes nice. So we'll make a little bit of a, we'll do some kind of a leafy looking feathery kind of thing out of these to add to the yarn. My toes are cold. I should have socks on. My brain is thinking, what's the best method of this? I told myself I was not going to drop anything else today. I think I'm going to use the denim thread for the stem to kind of give it a raised section it actually blends nicely with these fabrics this is a the gray jean stitch thread where's the end there we go i feel like i got granny eyes <laughs> hi b girls from clarksville tennessee And welcome. So I'm going to cut myself several of these.
I don't know if they go. This goes real nicely with all these in the box, but not so much with this. But you got the yarn on there, which right now looks like a, a knitter threw up all over my scarf. <laughs> but with these on it, I don't know. Well, I've done better with my fabric choices in the past. So does a scarf sound like a good idea for you guys for making gifts? This is the jelly roll. And it's real easy if the pieces are already cut and you just sew down with yarn and you can make quite a few scarves in a very short amount of time using the liquid base glue to join them together. So I think we'll do some long. I probably should have showed you what I did. <laughs> so I kind of made lips. <laughs> it does look like lips, doesn't it? And I should be able to sew from one side to the other down the middle to create a stem. And then if I pinch it, then we've got two leaves. I think that works nice. I could end up forming this so it looks like a flower. I don't know. It's artsy. It's artsy fartsy, as my son would say. So I have two of those. Except for this one doesn't have a point. Come on, Claire. We could attach it to the fabric and we can also have this hang with a piece of yarn coming out and have some leaves dangle way down. So to do this, we'll get out the satin edge foot. I mean, if we want to do a really nice job, ugh, how much time do I have? I, can't, I would I would do probably like four four or five sets of these leaves. Maybe have some individually hang down and do a satin stitch all the way around the fabric and then the stem. Or you can do what she was indicating, which she wanted feathers and a feather where you you would not do an edge. You would instead pull the threads out and make it fray. You can brush it with a uh, dog brush to pull the fibers out. Best done across the bias when you do stuff like that. <laughs> I had to think about what I was doing. It's, I'm looking for the satin edge foot. And this is my satin edge foot. It has this little wire that is connected to this white guide and it has the ability to adjust left and right by turning this little nut. It moves the entire assembly over, moving the, the wire over as well. Like that. And if I want to do a stem or going down the center of the leaf, well, I'm going to do that first. I was thinking of using this. I'm, I don't know. I think I'm changing my mind. I'm, I want to incorporate some of that burgundy onto the leaves to kind of tie it together. My my uh, snap-on adapter is missing because we weren't using a foot. Bye, Brenda. She always has to leave early. And 
And this is the snap-on adapter. Even if it came with your machine, it's still called a snap-on adapter. Because what its purpose is is to adapt your machine from a screw-on foot style machine. Ah, oh, I don't know, ruined another needle. Clumsy time. Ah, don't say that out loud. I am not clumsy. I'm highly coordinated. Does my mind ever stop coming up with ideas? Oh, God, it's exhausting. I barely sleep. Creativity is just uh, something I love. And apparently my sleeping brain loves it too. Okay, so I'm going to go down the center of this leaf. And to make it so that the leaf doesn't fall down into the machine, take a piece of fabric thicker than that and place it behind it so I can start right on the edge of that fabric and it will not fall down in the machine or stop feeding. Selecting a zigzag stitch, which is a stitch that just goes zigzag. Now this is the cat from the Halloween. <laughs> this is a zigzag stitch for those of you who are new to sewing. Goes like this. Zig, zag, zig, zag, zig, zag. And we're going to go really small on it, make it narrower. This is width. This is length. So we're going to we're going to squish up the length, which if you have a stitches per inch machine, you want to add stitches to the inch. And or if you have millimeters, then we'll start out at about a one, one millimeter wide and a one millimeter long. I'm fond of batiks as well. I think the reason I like batiks is because it, it feels like it's blended paint if it were a painting. So one millimeter wide width, one millimeter wide length. And then we want to turn the hand well until the needle swings left and right. We want to make sure that the wire on the foot, the guide pin, is centered. I'm going to go wider than that, one and a half millimeters wide. This is when you should use your glasses so you don't hit that guide pin on the foot. I'm looking for my glasses. Oh, they're right here. Now, this would be a time when you can hold on to your, your needle and bobbin thread and kind of bring it to the back in case it wants to not feed for those first few stitches. And that kind of, because the thread will actually be attached to the fabric. Oh, I got my tensions a little tight. I only had the bobbin thread, which is why that didn't work. Still don't have the needle thread in my hand. Where is it? There it is. Needle thread being the most important one. Okay, now I'm gonna go to one and a half on the length too. We don't need this to be really tight. This is a loose design that we're going for. I mean, even go longer, go to, oh, I only had it at 1.2. So you go to two. Yeah, two's fine, because we just want to give it a look, and I don't want it to take too long. Foot pressure. Need to take it down. I had it at the tightest, so it was kind of stretching, because this fabric is cut across the grain, so it is stretchier in this direction. I had my speed control dropped. If you wanted to be sure that you're in the center, you could have folded your fabric first in half and then done a little crease to draw 
to make a folded line. If you look where you're going instead of where you're at, look here rather than there, then you will head toward this instead of going veering off to some other direction. Let the machine do the feeding. So you can see how even though we stitched down the fabric, it didn't tunnel because the wire on the foot, the guide pin, doesn't let the fabric tunnel on you. So it keeps it laying nice and flat. So here's another, this is what I meant to show you. So you would take and fold your fabric in half and then press. And this is one of my pressers. So you don't have to use your iron for everything. This is the kind of this is the time when you burn your fingers with an iron anyway when you have little pieces that you're folding. So it eliminates you burning yourself. And you have a nice crisp press to follow now. Grab that needle thread. You can also have a single layer of fabric. Because if you have an oscillating hook machine, you, like the Bernina or older machines, it might be better if you start on a piece of fabric. And then you take and bring your next fabric over. You don't want it to be connected. And it'll help you start right at the point. Come on. Show them I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, you can see pulling the thread was better. Definitely the holding the needle and bobbin thread was a better option. Don't focus on where you are. Look where you're headed. And we can keep the uh, line right lined up with the white guide once the fabric starts to feed. And that's simply science. I mean, the, the point is so close together, the feed dogs don't have anything to grab until the fabric starts to feed through. You could also do strips and cut the shape of the leaf after. That would be a lot easier. So I'll show you what I mean. funny because I don't even want to stop when I'm on with you guys live. I just have so much fun. Like a pour. I think I'm going to go a little bit shorter on the stitch length on this one for you. Just so people can see that you can achieve it. A smaller stitch. Yes, like a pour. I now know what you mean. <laughs> People that do that acrylic pouring. It's kind of cool. So I shorten the stitch length. That's better stitch length. 1.2 is a more dramatic look. And since this leaf would be hanging, it would be best to match your needle and bobbin thread, which I did not do. So then you would just take and fold your fabric. And you have skipped having to start at a point by just cutting the leaf shape out after sewing that stitch.
do a better job of shaping that. You can also fold it so that you get the same distance, same shape. Now we have a double leaf again. So since what she was wanting was kind of feathers, so you would fray it on purpose, but it's also a nice thing to show you that you can satin stitch with this satin edge foot on the edge of the fabric. Now we're going to use a wider width, a two and a half millimeter wide stitch width. There's no rule on that. It's just what I've chosen to do. I'm not going to start at the point because it's harder for the machine, so we always want to start where it's easier and where you're not going to notice the start stop point and what i'm doing is in the instructions for the foot you choose the width of the stitch bring the needle down on the right swing move the wire over so that the wire is touching the, the inside of the needle in its right swing so it's going to go like that on the fabric's edge and i'm going to take it down this is 0 0.8 on the length. Whoopsie. I was reading the chat <laughs> instead of watching what I was doing. Remember this is loose. It's okay if it's not perfect. They're just little free loose appliques to apply to your scarf to add interest to take away from the sloppiest sloppiness of that yarn this is another time when I may just pull the thread out so that I can start it and help it grab it Make sure you're not bending the foot at all. Now you can take and bring the needle down in the left swing. Bring that thread to the front. This is also how you can finish the edge of surging stitches with a serger without anyone seeing your start stop point. I just do did I not tighten this down that's where I did sometimes I unconsciously turn the nut and change the wires position if you ever do that know that you're not alone if I can do it you can do it I didn't know that, Amy. So both sides of the leaves are not the same. Ever? Kind of like our right hand and our left hands are not the same. That's the glue on my hand, not dry skin. I pulled off the wire to make this turn because this turn was deeper than the other side. So you don't want to be bending the wire when you come down because then your needle will be bending. I did move it. So that's what happened. I'm also challenged here because I have a microphone and a light in my way. I can't really see that well when I'm setting up the foot. So just a loose leaf of sorts. Pull off the wire, turn.
Now this time I'm starting with the wire on the fabric's edge for the first couple stitches. See if we can get through it. It's kind of like the foot becomes the the finger that I would need to help it not stop feeding. <laughs> Except for this is set up to so off the edge so it doesn't want to stay on the edge. This is when you need a stylus or your spine. If you don't have a stylus, you can use a safety pin. Ah, I tipped something over in my drawer. You can also use the Appliquick tools. Where are my Appliquick tools? There's the pliers I couldn't find earlier. There we go. The Appliquick tool is a great stylus. It has this beautiful little point on it on one end. And that just helps you get things in position beneath the needle. You don't want to leave it down there while you're starting to sew. It just kind of helps you to slide it under. And we're just doing something that's really challenging for any sewing machine with any foot. Starting at a point, not enough fabric for the feed dogs to grab. So we're doing stitches and then pulling it off, pulling it down on the wire. Slide down a little more. So if you have a stylus already, give it a thumbs up. So I know you do. And now you know if you don't have one and you have the Appliquick tools that you have, you can use it to help you sew as well as help you do your applique. Hi, Shady. Yo, <laughs> that's cute. All right, so now I've got leaves without stitching on the edge and leaves with stitching on the edge. You only see one until you make them two. And you can make them two by gathering across the center here with a gathering stitch. Or you can tie it with yarn because we're actually creating a scarf. So with and without satin stitching on the edge, and we can of course do this much bigger as I have shown many times on napkins. So close, a little too close. And a little bit messy. Ah, so we have all these different yarns to choose from. And this one's like a combination of ribbon. Ooh, I like this. It's got one longer than the other and tie it. Sorry, I got my mic far away from my hands. What do you guys think? Or should I first stitch this and kind of make this look like a flower? I'm running out of time, Claire. I think I'm gonna make it look like a flower. Using the sequins and ribbon foot for that. Because it sews what? It sews sequins and ribbon, but it also sews yarn and elastics. I've been using it a lot lately because 
for a long time I barely used it at all and it is one of my favorite feet to play with when doing this type of work. And it has different size openings so that you can put more than one yarn through at a time. This one is our eighth inch guide where it has the round hole for round items and then this for flat and you can do both at the same time with it. So when you have a yarn like this where it gives you three different trims, you could try doing it with our quarter inch guide, which is what it comes attached with. But this will move around inside of that opening and make it difficult for you to maintain a shape with that. I don't know if I want to waste that on there or not. A lot of these are that way. They're not just one, they're two trims. Got this one. This one has kind of a fluffiness to it, so I think it'll stand up better. How about this one? What about that one? What about this one? Should I be pulling from the center? I can't find the end. Ah, oh, we won't use that one if I can't find the end. This one's a little bit knobby. Ah, oh, they're just so pretty. Can incorporate all of these into this. Ooh, look at that one. This one's quarter inch. I'm sorry, I'm making you want something that I can't sell you because I bought it. And I don't know where the lid is. Oh, her bottom. Her bottom. <laughs> the label is on the bottom of the box. Ah. Glasses. Shady, this is a baby lock sewing machine. It is the Crescendo. And I paint all my machines, so um, that's why it's painted. Look, she gave us a little... No, oh, this is something I cut. Oh, that could go on there, too. Tool step wear wear W E A R W A R E. Her website is www. Toot T O O T S is in Sam I E P as in Paul dot com. I would show you, but it's the bottom, and I don't know where the lid is. So they would all fall out if I showed you the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to evaluate these looking from above. I think I'm leaning toward using this. And I think instead of trying to separate them, I am going to use them all as one in the quarter inch guide. And I'm going to use a three-step zigzag. They have it tied in a knot at the beginning. So to get the yarn into the into the guide, I'm going to mute for a second and take a sip of my snack. Totally forgot we could use that too. It's a little bit too intense, I think, for this. Take a piece of thread and you lay the yarn over your thread. Did I unmute? Yes. <laughs> ah. Then you take the two ends of the thread through the guide. And pull this through. 
And then we kind of see, is it going to have trouble going through? It looks like it's going to be fine. And I really should have this, this fabric stabilized, but it's all right. It's going to be a scarf. I'm going to double layer it. So no one's going to see the back and the fact that it puckers well. It really isn't going to matter because it's going to be all scrunched up around my neck anyway. And it's okay if I leave this hanging down because it adds interest. Right? In fact, I could bring this back up like that and deliberately sew over it so that it's loop instead of a, an in, a loose end and at the end when I'm all done if I drag it up like this and bring it down well now I have one that is going to be raw and then I have the loop well I could do more than one loop couldn't I go like this and now we have see how creative this is you guys so much fun And all I have to do is stitch across that and those loose yarns will be hanging out the bottom of this. <laughs> where's, where's the end that's not stitched? There we go. Three step zigzag is a multiple zigzag stitch. And that goes like this. Zig, zig, oops, sorry. Zig, 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 zag. Zag, zag, zig, 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 zag, zag, zag. So it's not going to really show up a lot. And if you use a complementary color like I am, I'm using that burgundy that's all in here that you can't really see. And I'm going to use a wide width so that I have no chance of not catching that. Because they're going to swing around. It's going to be all messy. But this is a messy project. We want it to be messy. Three step zigzag on this machine. I'm going seven millimeters wide. I don't need to. I could go five and it'd be fine. Length. <laughs> zig, 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 zag, zag, zag. All right, here we go. I stitched a little bit. Now I'm going to lift up, go back, and stitch some more. Lift up, go back, stitch some more. Since we don't have any real accurate area that we know where we're starting on any of that, doing that kind of locks it in. And I'm going to let these hang out from there. Just kind of want to give it some kind of a shape to where it looks like some kind of a floral. Or I don't know, just... Maybe we should do a flower. So we'll come back. This foot is designed to go over the yarns and let you create designs like this. So this was the original end. Now I'm bringing that down. Oh yeah, I'm liking this. Okay. So if I do a figure eight, come back the other way. I have a stitch length at 1.5 length. If I had it longer, it would be easier to turn. And the foot pressure should be on the, the lowest setting. You can also stop, lower the needle, lift, and spin the fabric to get a more petal shape. But you notice that I'm able to hold the fabric and let the yarn do what the yarn wants to do. So I can focus on where I'm driving the fabric. I'm gonna come back around. So this is actually gonna be even wider. Shouldn't have done a figure eight. Oh, 
Oh well. <laughs> I should have done a flower. Come back in the middle. So how you would do a flower versus what I did. First of all, a flower has a center. <laughs> Lift and spin and come back out again. This is me just trying to do things faster. That's why I did a figure eight. But it doesn't make it faster if it doesn't end up looking like a flower. Why do I have stuff at the top? My screen. Yes, I use the uh, three-step zigzag stitch for darning. It's a great stitch for that. Unless I use the octi hoops, because the octi hoops is, is the ideal method for darning. Well, it's going to be different. I can always make a circle by. Just kind of making a big knot in the middle, can't I? But isn't it nice that the yarns are in control? The foot has control of the yarn for you. I have this really big knobby yarn. That would be perfect for the middle. I think it matches. Can you guys tell that it looks good? I like it. I'm starting to like it. My artist inside of me is happy. This is the most unusual scarf ever. One of a kind. The kind of piece that people would sit there and go, oh my gosh, I really like that. Where'd you get it? God. Man, it costs like so much money. Oh, gosh, I really like this. Now I have to finish it, make it into a real scarf. Can wear this on the art walk. All right, let me grab that big yarn. I think I know where it is. And I'm not going to cut this short. I'm going to let that hang out in the middle, I think. But I do want to secure it, so go back, lift, wait for the machine to stop, lift, go back. gonna pull out quite a bit whoops Ugh. I feel like I'm wasting it but I'm not because I'm actually making something <laughs> it fell on the ground and got in my toe Check that out. So if I were to see, do something like that, what do you think? Thumbs up. 
if you like it. We have an art walk here too, Amy, on uh, the fourth Friday. I missed it. This I went down there to do it, but I ended up taking too long to go down there. So I'm going to tie these together. working you guys for someone who doesn't knit I sure have a lot of yarn now you know why it's an interesting way of securing yarn to fabric huh Tying a knot. I think I'm going to spin it around a little. Let's see. Are you guys getting bored? Not enough sewing. I need to see you chatting. Oh, it's kind of cute, huh? Yeah, ours is only five to eight, so. so. The point of me going to the art walk is to actually, I will be having my art on display in Prescott. Building up for that. Talked to some galleries recently. So next year. I don't want to announce anything before. I have it set in stone, but I am supposed to be one of the featured artists at one of our popular restaurants up here called The Raven in the spring of 2022. And I will be doing an art, an artist meet and greet one night. So I'm going to let you all know well ahead so that if any of you want to make your way here for that, and maybe afterward we can go to dinner. Or eat there, the Raven. There, now it's good. now it's a flower. That mess turned into a flower. What do you guys think? We got to tie on our leaves. Where'd they go? There's one. Where'd the other one go? I'm bringing my mic over so I can talk over here. You guys like it? It's cool. I like that you think it's cool. I think it's cool too. Messy and cool. That actually be kind of neat on a bag too, wouldn't it? I don't know about the where to put the f this though. Or if I should even use it. So I can get rid of this end. Ugh. Definitely gonna have to wear this scarf. Okay. Good placement. There's really no petal right there. 
So I'm just going to stitch across there. Sequin ribbon foot is the best foot for this because we're still going over all this bulky yarn. I think I'm going to stitch across and then bring it back down. Is that what I should do? Or should I tie a little yarn? Good to have the yarn just loose like that. So I'm going to go like this. Multiple zigzag stitch again. You can hear it thump through the yarn. It's got a lot of thickness there. Lift, go back. It's messy, so we can be messy with our stitching too. A fiber art. Then you shorten your stitch length down to zero and sit there. And that ties a knot as well. So now the yarn is coming out from where the leaves come together. Makes it look, I don't know if I need more than just two leaves though, but I got some to dangle. Where'd they go? I lost my leaves, so they're there. So I didn't satin stitch around this, now I want it to match. My brain does not want one to be loose. I think I like just that. I don't want any loose leaves. <laughs> I don't know why that sounds so funny to me. So I still have a really good length here to add to make it either to extend it down so it, it falls farther down the scarf. But I'm t I tend to catch things on things when I wear them. I think I'm going to make bring back a loop and tie it around a leaf. Okay, so that's tied in a knot. What do you guys think? It's what time? 4.23? I don't want to rush it and then end up not liking it when it's done. Let's see if I can lay it here and you can see it. It looks better in person than on camera. I really like it. Artistic. Here's the thing. I think I have fabric here somewhere that comp that would complement the yarn to use in addition to this. And I don't want to have that messy looking back. Oh, goodness. If I finish it now, I can have it to wear. But it's 4.30, two and a half hours in. This is just too bright, I think, the purple. 
I want to have it more in these tones. What have I got on the rack here? Some acid wash silk. No, no, no. Even if you think yes, yes, yes. I was trying not to make purple. And that's still too bright of a purple. I feel like I should stop for today and Maybe meet up with you guys in the school for a live session, because I haven't done one in a long time. A Zoom chat, maybe, to finish this off. Maybe not. I shouldn't make promises that it's really busy right now. Let's see. What have I got? Yep, sometimes you just got to stop. Unless I just make it out of this fabric and have that yarn be on the ends. Cream color background. I know I'm going to get that stuck, so I got to make this shorter. And there is a strand hanging here that I can anchor this loop to. Good to know yourself and I know that I get my scarves stuck on things and they don't have things hanging from them. The last time I rushed it or I didn't think it through enough. That's just kind of a neat little short scarf too, huh? Be a neat Dicky. Yeah, this would be something I would wear with like a black top or I see what you're saying. A white cream blouse. And then you I don't know, I kind of like it being an infinity scarf kind of design. What do you think? I think I'm too tired to go on. And I've already gone two and a half hours, so... I'll let you know how this turns out. I know I'm trying to give you Christmas presents that you can finish. I'm going to just have to stop, though, because I know that I'm taking too long to think. And if I figure it out, I will start next week with it. I think this is a, a really fun little project for you to do on a lot of different things, including a bag. So what do you guys think? Are you guys ready to let me go? Do you think it's fair of me to stop after two and a half hours? Do you feel like you benefited from this? And actually we could, we could strip, slit this fabric in addition and this then in itself becomes 
an, an entire applique to adhere to the top of a scarf that you can have, you know, this kind of fabric be underneath like I did here where I just kind of tore the fabric. So I'll give you a little bit more of a look at this. It's similar. We were able to achieve a similar look, except for in this case, the yarn is a completely separate piece that I stitched across the top onto this fabric, whereas this one is actually attached to the fabric in its entirety. So two different concepts with the same idea for a scarf. That's better lighting. You guys couldn't really see that before. Push the sew, oh, that sewing machine. Push the sewing machine back so you can see the whole flower. I'll let you know what I figure out. I'm thinking that I uh, I need to go to the store and buy some fabric that coordinates really nice with this. If I can't find something in my tubs of fabric and shelves. So with that, this is the end of maybe the uh, second to the last. There may only be one more episode of Fabrically Speaking Live for 2021 because it's just a busy time of year for everyone, right? And if you have any questions or if you can suggest what I should do with that, I'd love to hear it in the comment. After we end this, the uh, comments will be available to you and I can see the live chat if I missed anything. You like the idea of an infinity kind of scarf? You know, I've never sewn an infinity scarf, so it would be interesting. But I like a scarf that hangs down because it cuts your it cuts your figure a little bit, you know, kind of detracts from the from my belly. And uh, I'm glad that you guys had fun and I hope to I hope to see some of this even if you just do it to do it to just have fun with it and explore what you might be able to use this on it is what I would call wearable art and it is a fun thing to do you could add that to a jacket that you make and I still do plan on making a jacket So, sorry, I feel a little bit out of it, like I'm not normal energy level. You could actually add sequins too and have some sequins kind of hanging down. You could take a single sequin off and tie it onto the yarn and have just kind of like loose sequins hanging down to add more interest to it and add rhinestones to that as well within the yarn and have it glisten a little bit to dress it up even more. Be sure to join my school. It's Create with Claire Rowley, found at create.clairerowley.com. And my website is creativefeet.com. Thanks for joining me. I love you guys. Bye. See you next week.